probably be wondering what this talk is going to be about. One size fits all. One size doesn't fit all is what I want to be talking about. I'm a storyteller. That's the other thing, the fun thing that I didn't tell them. So this afternoon, I'll be telling you three stories. The first story is about her story. For all the men out there, you must know, you always start with her story. <laughs> Before you talk about history, about your story. And finally, we're going to be talking about our story. Now, what is this her story all about? I want to begin about this lady that I think is important for all of us to know. It's the issue of corruption. I wrote this book a couple of years ago entitled Combating Corruption, Understanding the Many Anti-Corruption Initiatives in Malaysia. And in that book, one of the important things that we try to understand is that corruption is not a new phenomenon. It has been there for a long time. In fact, Kautilya, in his book, Atashastra, when he wrote this 2,400 years ago, he already talked about corruption. He even made a comparison that how public servants in doing their daily lives would be affected somehow or other and be corrupted in some way or another. Just as fish in the water, you don't know when the fish drink the water, but when it's in the water, it might, the tendency of getting, drinking and doing other things. So how do we then fight this corruption issue? Can we just ask everybody to just stand up and pledge and promise that they're not going to be corrupt? Even husband who make wedding vows cheated on their wives. I mean, my wife is here. <laughs> so I'm and she knows that I have integrity. Now, let's look at the state of corruption in the world. You will see, this is based on the study done by Transparency International on the Corruption Perception Index. And those countries, lighter in colour, are the less or the least corrupt countries compared to those, the darker ones. Now, it looks like almost every part of the world is corrupt. And that's why I'm here to talk to you that we together need to do something about it. But before we talk in more detail about the kind of programs, the kind of things, the kind of solution that we can do, we need to understand the cause of corruption, the impact of corruption, and what this will do to a nation if we do nothing. To give you an example, to illustrate, let me use an example from Malaysia. A couple of years ago, and this is based on a report by Utusan Online, in 2011, when a group of people from Anti-Corruption Commission arrested a number of senior officials in a custom department, and they estimated that 108 billion income of this country basically lost. The country losses 108 billion. Now, how can the money get lost? Because the people who have no integrity, people who are not honest, instead of doing their job to collect money, but to collect taxes, instead they take money for their personal gain and let whatever taxable product, item, get passed through, and therefore, the country lost that potential income. Now, how much is one billion? How many of you know how many, how many millions are there in one billion? Thousand. Thousand million is a lot of money. We can do a lot of things. To illustrate that again, let us look at this report. It called, to build a hospital, a state-of-the-art hospital, you need to have at least 110 million. Now, all of you smart people here, please tell me how many hospitals we could not build because of corruption.
Now, this is real. This is just hospitals. We haven't looked at other things like universities, schools with good facilities, roads, bridges, and even homes for shelter for, for, the, for, for, the, for the people out there. Now, let us pause for a minute and look at, in real life, why do this thing happen? Do, do people don't have any values? Do people only know a certain things where the gain and everybody wants to become rich just because they look at some role models who own big house, big cars, and you think by being rich is successful? We have to ask ourselves. And this part of this talk that I want to share, my personal experience. I was never called by my parents to sit before them and lecture me. I was never lectured. But I learned by observing, I learn by seeing how they act and what do they do. One action that I learned from very early age, you know, my household, my dad introduced the no gift policy long time before any government agency stopped people from receiving gifts. He was just a chief health inspector in a municipal council in Penang. And of course, that position is very powerful. He can close down business premises, restaurants, if they don't adhere to, to the rules and regulation. So people want to be nice to him. Every festive season, and unfortunately in Malaysia, there's a lot of festive. Every Hari Raya, every Dipavali, every Christmas, every Chinese New Year, we will get hampers. And my sister and I, of course, you know, when we look at nice chocolates, nice gifts, but dad will come out and tell us, what's that? Who's that from? Return it back. Return to sender. Uncle, here, take this back. Dad say we cannot take this. Yes. He said that for as long as he's in service, he's not going to take any money. Let's wait and see if people do come and give once he's retired. But who will give gifts when he's no longer in power? But because he was honest, people do come and give gifts. And another lesson that I learned very early in age, my dad taught us that whatever we get from people, any services, we have to pay for it. And I remember, I remember I did well in school. He took the whole family out on outing. We went for dinner. And on the way home, he remembers that he'd forgotten to pay one of the stalls. Maybe 40 cents at that time. But he dropped us home and drove all the way back to pay that 40 cents. Now, where do you learn this kind of lesson? If parents are too busy outsourcing their kids to mate to take care, and instead, because they said they have to work to bring back money, and the mate won't share the kind of values, if at all, they have. This is an important lesson that you don't learn in school, you don't learn in university. And this is why I'm on a mission to try to remind people that we have to begin by teaching our children. We have to begin to promote integrity, to inculcate the good values at home. And we have to begin by sharing this real kind story. And while telling stories, we have to do other things as well. Sadly, why this is important, because recently we conducted a survey to show the current trend of what do the young people think. And this study was done in three public universities. And we found that 36% of them says that accepting gifts in the form of money, goods, or services for services rendered is not wrong. The question asks, are the following statements an act of corruption? And there you have it. 36% of people, educated people in university, thought that that's not wrong. 20% said using funds, money for personal interest is not wrong. Another 14% says forcefully obtaining money, goods, or services from clients is not wrong. And I don't understand this 21% that says they don't know that directly involved in process of awarding contracts to family members is okay. What is happening to our society? You want to, to get further findings about the research? Let's look further. Another 20% directly involved in the process of appointing family members is okay to appoint our family members. And that worrying trend is the 37% that says submitting claims 
for outstation accommodation when accommodation was already provided is okay. And you look at the 22% that says they don't know that that's wrong. Now, do we just allow this kind of trend to continue? Or we have to come up with some solution of what we need to do with it. Fortunately, 97% says money politics is, is wrong. But that's because it doesn't involve them. It's the politician. But if it's involved them, I, it's all right for me to take the, the thumb drive. There's even somebody who said that, yeah, taking or using office equipment, thumb drive, printer, toner, for personal use, it's all right. So, people out there, please, I think this is important for us to refresh our memory and try to understand. And we have to understand the importance of integrity in society and why all this thing must be fought. Otherwise, it becomes part and parcel of life. You think it's all right, and then we, we're going to have problems. Now, the final part of my talk, I want to share some, some solution that we have done. Education alone is not enough. We cannot teach subjects like integrity. Integrity cannot be taught formally. It has to be caught, and that's hence the, ex the experience, the background that I gave in this talk. But we have to start them young. We have to start them in, in kindergarten. We have to share, let them understand the values. Let them do, let them experience it. And we have to continue to do this. Every teacher in every subject must, at the end of the lesson, add that special message. A teacher who teaches accounting at the end of class, okay, kids, now I've taught you how to balance your account, but don't use this knowledge to evade from paying income tax, to do creative accounting. That's wrong. Society probably have forgotten. Do you know, when God created baby in the mother's womb, what was the first thing that was created? The heart. The brain come much later. But as the baby comes out, funnily that we just focus on the brain. You want your kids to be smart. You want your kids to get more education, tuition, piano, everything. But who touches the heart? No one. So as the kids grow, of course, they become very intelligent, but they're very smart of how to outsmart other people. They're very smart about how to cheat other people. The brain gets bigger, the heart gets smaller, and they become heartless people. And hence, they will do the kind of things that you read in the newspapers today. We have to reverse all this. We must use technology. And in my personal experience, we have developed a dashboard to monitor the programs, the initiative, whether they are targeting, getting the right people. And from this particular uh, data that I can share with you from June 20, 2015 to June 2016, we found out that there are 1,784 programs, initiatives have been organized throughout the country. But unfortunately, from that 1,784, we found 1,736 are only trauma, are only talk shop. Now, if talk can solve problems. All Muslim men that goes to Friday prayers and Christian that goes to church to listen to the sermon would be good people. Unfortunately, talk alone won't solve problems. We need other mechanisms. We need other initiatives. And therefore, through technology, you can dissect the data. You can analyze. You can do the trend analysis. You can understand the root cause of the problem. We need to use other mediums. The social media, certainly, the young people are always with their smartphone. And we need to make sure that the social media are used widely for the, for the benefit, for the good thing, not for the wrong reason. Theatre, movie is one way of, you know, you are vulnerable while watching movie. In fact, this dim light that you're listening to me, I think you're paying attention. And a lot of multinational companies are using marketing strategy, product placement in movie without you realizing there's a certain car that they want you to, to, to drive, a certain kind of cigarettes they want you to smoke. And these are the kind of ways that we have to use the same method of how we educate the people, how we create awareness to the people. And we, we are using theater as a method. Through arts, through photography competition, different competition can help us to understand from a different lens of how people look at things. And we need to really use different effort and different initiative. We have simple ways of how to attract the youngsters. We created mascots. 
that turtle is the mascot to reach out to the kids because we have a special program for the kids, a special module for kindergarten and to educate and relate that this particular mascot is a mascot that promotes integrity. Environment must also be addressed. People don't respect the environment today. People go to picnic, they can throw all sorts of things without any respect for the other people to come. We have to put signage, we have to remind people they have to practice integrity. Family outings. A lot of promotion that family must come together in terms of fighting this cause. If we want to have a better future where corruption doesn't exist, then we have to start a movement where family, the community must stand together to improve this. Finally, there are other instruments out there available. One of it is psychometric tests. Psychometric test is a way that you can psychologically evaluate whether the person is prone to do corruption or, or do anything, any wrongdoing. Now, all this technology is useful. The integrity assessment tools is another way of how you can make sure that you know the direction of the organization. It can be assessed. And all that is important for you to then use the community as a way to get uh, the third eye, the additional eyes and ears to make sure that the other parties are not going to come in and destroy the development of the country. Now, ladies and gentlemen, all these initiatives are just some examples. There are many more out there. And what I want to emphasize is that we have to employ and strategize and use whatever knowledge that we have to fight this. This corruption will destroy us, destroy the future of any nation if we don't stand up and start to play our own role. I begin by sharing that one size doesn't fit all, and certainly we need different sizes of, of shoes. We need all of you to come together, and that's the only way that we can fight this problem that has been around for a long time, but we have to put a stop. With that, I thank you.